welcome to my youtube channel basic concepts of microbiology today we will talk about host pathogen interaction host pathogen interaction in terms of medical microbiology right okay so during infection the host living beings there is an interaction between the parasite or infectious agent right these infection infections can be categorized into various types like based on their mode of entry right at the site of entry okay based on these it, there are interactions can be of different types for instance if you will see we'll uh, see the basic terminologies so what is a pathogen a pathogen is a microorganism that can cause disease in a plant animal or insect fine for instance cholera is being caused by a bacterium vibrio cholerae and leishmaniasis is caused by a protozoa leishmania donovani is there and there are other leishmania species while there are opportunistic pathogen opportunistic means they like under certain conditions these uh, microorganisms uh, or pathogens they will cause infection in the living host otherwise they they are non infectious right okay so these are the microorganisms that take advantage of certain situation usually do not cause disease in a healthy host and one with a healthy immune system means if one is having a normal immune system then the nor these microbes or these pathogens they are not going to infect but in certain conditions like in immunocompromised patient or in a patient going under long for a long period of antibiotic treatment then there is a possibility of opportunistic infections okay for instance candidiasis aspergillosis these are the examples of opportunistic pathogens okay and diseases a compromised immune system however present as an opportunity for the pathogen to interact okay let this condition right okay we'll see pathogenicity see pathogen the infectious agent pathogenicity how they are infecting means what mechanism they are having right for infection for instance it will talk about pathogenicity is the ability to produce disease in a host organism right okay microbes express their pathogenicity using their virulence virulence their top, what do you call that uh, harmful nature or pathogenic nature right okay or in other way pathogenesis is the multifactorial process that depends on the immune status of the host whether they are healthy they are immunocompromised and the nature of the species or strain virulence factor strain bacterial strain or pathogenic strain and the number of organisms in the initial exposure yes and one more factor how many pathogenic strains have entered to our body or to the host the it will also decide the pathogenicity right okay virulence so what is virulence virulence is a term that refers to the degree of pathogenicity of the microbe up to what extent pathogenicity is there so that is virulence okay has the determination of virulence of a pathogen are of its genetic biochemical structural features that enable it to produce disease in a host right okay so come to the parasite parasite means a living organism that takes its nourishment from other needs from other needs from a host okay that means a host is there and a parasite which will be definitely smaller in size they will occupy the host and they will derive the nutrition from those host right and supports the parasite they will in turn they will get the shelter the parasite they will get the shelter and nutrition from the host right okay so the parasites included in the medical parasitology are protozoa helminths and some arthropods okay or in other way parasite is a living organism which to procure food and shelter take up their adobe right okay temporarily for a time being or permanently on another living organism right so that is a parasite broadly speaking all all pathogens may be classified as parasites okay
fine so how we can categorize these parasites the parasites can be classified based on their site of location where they are present okay so they could be either ectoparasite means if ecto means wait okay ecto means upon okay and endo means inside that means ecto these are the parasite for instance body leaves they are present on the outside of our body okay there is in the skull part or head this one head portion right okay and on the surface of body of the host for example leaves clear sticks might all these are examples of ectoparasites well there are endoparasites too which present inside the body of the host these endoparasites are dependent on the host for survival if the host has died then they will also die okay it has to be within the host to live grow and multiply so that means they will multiply grow inside the host organism right okay a parasite cannot live independently right okay this is applicable to both so based on the based on the time of stay how much time they will spend in the host what period of time these parasites stay in the host on the basis of that it can be categorized parasites can be categorized into two categories temporary host and permanent host temporary host as the it as it suggests they will reside over there temporarily for instance visit host for a short period of time like mosquito is there okay blood sucking flies bugs flies lake trees mites okay like they will be there for a certain period of time and after that they will leave it okay there are certain permanent host okay for instance trypanosomes or trypanosoma plasmodium which causes uh, malaria plasmodium falciparum bukrelia oncocera and loawa these are like permanent host right okay so there are other conditions on based on the like what is the nature of these parasites okay on the basis of that based on the nature of parasite they are obligate parasite or they are facultative obligate means it is mandatory for them to be in that form right okay can't live without its host if that particular host is not there or some other host is there then they will not live right okay example trypanosoma equiperdum trachinella plasmodium trypanosoma gambiense bucraria boncrofti boncocera volvulus loawa within the host transfer right okay if they don't have the their proper host they will die or the disease cycle they it will not take this right but there are parasites too which lives facultatively means if their specific parasite is there they will live they will be happy if it is not there they will acclimatize but still they will alive right okay that means in that case infection cycle they will be in the loop they will keep on infecting called infect infecting but here if suppose these uh, host is not there the disease cycle will stop okay so facultative parasite live parasitic life when opportunity arises like neglaria following okay so parasite what are parasites parasites is an organism that grows feeds and takes shelter or in a different organism while contributing nothing to the survival of its host that means they are not going to benefit to the host okay what is obligate or intracellular parasite an an organism or a parasite which can not reproduce outside their host cell meaning that the parasite's reproduction is entirely reliant on the intracellular sources example viruses some of the bacteria chlamydia and rickettsia okay one more important in the host pathogen interaction is vectors vectors means these are the organism which are involved or responsible for transferring of these pathogens or parasites okay so vectors can be broadly categorized into two types one biological vectors like mosquito is there one is mechanical vectors right okay both are living beings but one is classified as um, like house fly it is a um, mechanical vectors right okay so vectors are organisms that transmit pathogens and parasite from one infected person or animal to another causing serious diseases in human populations right vectors may be different species of mosquitoes flies flea bugs ticks and mites okay 
there are many factors which are hematophagous phagous food heme blood right okay that means they will sorry they will feed on blood right okay they will take blood which feed on blood at some or all stages of their lives means all the stages of their life they will be eating taking blood from the host where the insects feed on blood the parasite enters the blood stream of the host this can happen in different ways right it is quite obvious once these parasites they will enter the blood stream from there it will be circulated throughout um, they will spread systemically right okay mosquitoes act as vectors for malaria filariasis dengue yellow fever chikungunya etc infective agent gets transferred to the human host when the mosquito feeds on them okay so this was about vectors they, these are different vectors like flies bugs loose free sticks these are the different examples of vectors okay so as i told you vectors can be broadly categorized into two types one biological vector another one mechanical vector biological vector this is one example glossolina glossina for trypanosoma gambiense which multiply and transfer right okay it is and transfer right okay mechanical vectors for instance house fly in case of ant amoeba histolytica simply they transfer but they don't multiply that's why they are mechanical vectors right okay but with or upon both host and biological vectors vector the parasite undergoes aspect of its life cycle thus in one sense all the host that can pass a parasite on particularly to another species of host is also a biological vector okay however if the parasite does not undergo some aspect of its life cycle as it is transported by one organism to a second then the first organism is described as a mechanical vector okay flies can be a mechanical vector of fecal bond or feces bond pathogens such as salmonella okay come to the carrier carrier is a person who harbors the pathogen like carrier the one who is having the infectious agent they are not showing the symptoms but in certain cases they may act as a what do you call source of pathogenic strains and the one the person who's have who is immunosuppressed or immunocompromised then there is a chance of catching the infection so carrier is the person who harbors the pathogenic microorganism without suffering any disease from it right okay so these carriers can be classified into two types one healthy carriers it is not showing any symptoms but another one is convalescent carriers in healthy carriers these are the persons who harbor the microorganisms but have never suffered from any diseases by it right okay what are convalescent carriers these are the persons who had been infected by that microorganism and are recovering from the that infection mm -hmm. even though they have no more symptoms of the disease they continue to shed the microorganisms into the environment for instance salmonella and there are other um, food and water borne pathogens like if a patient is infected though he or she has recovered they keep on shedding all these pathogens in the stool sample so it will act as a source of infection for the other like if if that fecal matter is contaminated it comes in contact with water then there is a chance of contamination right okay Besides this, carriers could be temporary one, chronic carriers, contact carriers, and paradoxal carriers. Temporary carriers they will carry this um, this pathogens for a short period, of, last for less than six months, right? Chronic carriers long time. The carrier trait extends beyond six months as for years. Contact carriers a person may become a contact carrier when he or she acquires the microorganism due to his or her contact with the patient, right? Okay. what a paradoxical carrier when a person is a a person is a paradoxical carrier when he or she acquires the microorganism from another carrier right so this is para okay paradoxical carrier so types of carrier we have already seen healthy carriers convalescent carriers as a repetition okay chronic carriers contact carriers paradoxical carriers okay there was one more temporary carriers 
sides of carriage so where these um, what do you call pathogens they may be carried for example laser or the rest with this one laser system staphylococcus aureus they will be they are all normally present over are in this nasal what do you call tract then there is nasopharyngeal meningococcus many nasalia meningitis and body tela they are normally present in the nasopharynx and in rare condition like they may what do you call transferred in urinary salmonella is always there fecal matter again salmonella is always there in our serum hepatitis b is always present in hands klebsiella pseudomonas staphylococcus besides this many more pathogens resides okay thank you we will see more medical what do you call we will talk about other host pathogen interaction like opportunistic pathogen pathogenic infections nosocomial infections in our next class thank you